Okay, my name's Gary. I'm here today to uh, do a seed haul on the different corn varieties we're going to be planting this year and some we planted last year. Uh, I'm, in zone, I'm in Southeast Texas Zone 8B. Uh, the first corn, I'm going to be planting these in, in succession planting uh, because corn does cross pollinate and if it cross pollinates it will ruin that year's corn crop. It's different than like tomatoes, it don't matter if they cross pollinate if you're not saving seeds, where in this case the seeds are what we're eating. It will affect that year's seeds. So if a sweet corn and a, uh, a field corn cross pollinates, it would totally, totally ruin the taste of the sweet corn. Uh, so the first one we're going to plant is going to be the sweet corn. And I'm going to try to get it uh, you know, pollinated first and then pollinate the rest of them. So the one we're going to be planting this year is going to be Tempted Sweet Corn. It's from Haas Tools. It's got a 70 day uh, ripening period. Uh, and that's why I picked it. It is a synergistic corn. It has a gene for the SU, SH2, and the SE uh, gene in it, so it's going to give you a variety. Uh, it also is able to handle cooler soils than some of your other sweet corns. Uh, I'm going to plant it in a 12 by 12 block, and I'm going all organic on this one. Uh, it's going to have organic fertilizer. I've already put alfalfa down, uh, alf alfalfa pellets. I'm also going to put down some microlife uh, granular uh, organic fertilizer. Uh, that's six to four ratio putting 12 and a half pounds of that that should give me enough nitrogen to be able to make the crop uh, We'll find out because I've never I've always used some, you know, I've always used conventional fertilizers uh, on the corn because it requires a lot of nitrogen uh, So we're gonna see if it works and it's gonna be on a brand new plot. So uh, It's really a test on it after I plant that then I'm going to be uh, well what I'm doing this year is we're going to be doing a uh, a test to see which of these the rest of these are going to be field corns and I'm going to test them to see how good the flavor is and how good it produces and all that I do have uh, we're going to be making some cornbread I've got a friend uh, of ours uh, that he's going to be making some cornbread and I know Brooke at the uh, seed to plate channel she's going to be making some uh, cornbread and different stuff too I'm going to whatever crop I make here I'm going to ship it some some of the corn to them so they can also try it and kind of see which one we like the best as far as flavor so you get three different families uh opinion on that uh the first one uh, i'm going to talk about is going to be the bloody butcher corn and it's a real it's a real pretty corn uh i either got it from southern exposure seed exchange hostels i can't remember which one uh it's a a uh an old heirloom it did seem to get the smut on the end of the, the cobs fairly, you know, ba uh, bad, but that could just be the fact that we're just so, so humid. But it's going to be interesting to see if how that works uh, on these other, other corns. It does have a tighter shuck, and I think all these kind of have tighter shucks on than what sweet corn has, and what that does for you, it keeps that corn earworm out of it. I will be plant. I will be conventionally uh, fertilizing the rest of these, but I will be spraying with all organics. I, I'll use a, a combination of spinosad and also uh, BT to help kill the, the earworm to keep the worms out of it. The next one we're going to talk about today is going to be the Ohio Blue. Um, I got it from out Haas Tools last year. I did grow a. Uh, uh, seedbed uh, with it, raised bed, and uh, it didn't do real well, and it's really the raised bed's fault because this corn gets really tall. Uh, in fact, most of these corn is going to get, I know the Buddy Blitzer, Ohio Blue, and uh, Hickory Corn, can Hickory King can all get over 12 foot tall. So it got really tall, uh, and because of that, you know, we made some, some, some good decent ears uh, like these two here. But then you also got a few of these, and what these are, it's not the fault of blue, uh, the uh, Ohio blue. It's just it didn't like get pollinated, and that's what they're going to look like. If you get corn that looks like that, it didn't get pollinated because corn is wind pollinated, and all it's got is those plants growing around it. The other thing I thought was kind of interesting about corn too is the individual plant is self-sterile. So if you got one plant, it's not going to produce. Your corn. Now the corn right beside it, same variety can can pollinate it, but that corn itself uh, won't pollinate itself. So that's why it's, it's good to get them in blocks. That's why the other one I'm going to plant in 12 or 12 blocks. You don't want to plant one row or two rows because all that pollen may blow one way and then it won't pollinate the corn. So if you got five rows, it's going to blow and, and, and she'd have plenty of, of, of pollen to pollinate all the ears of corn. The next one we're going to be growing this year is called Nalo Orange Flint Corn. Uh, it was developed by a guy, uh, and it's, I guess it's the only 
well, no, like I said, down there's uh, it's open pollinated. All the the, the uh, field corn are open pollinated. Uh, this has very bright, very vibrant orange, and it's supposed to have orange even in the inside. Most of these others just have the, the seed coating as the color, but this is supposed to have orange inside of it. It should make some really interesting looking uh, uh, cornbread. I did tend to go with color uh, when I was choosing these. The other one that I've never grown before, but it's, it, this is an old, old heirloom. Uh, it's called Hickory King corn. Now, if you look at these, it's known for, as having the biggest uh, kernels of, of any of the corns. And you see it's it's significantly bigger uh, than this. This is a standard size uh, uh, corn, but this in here is just a lot bigger. Uh, and, you know, it's it's white, so it's going to have, you know, if you like the white uh, flower uh, corn, uh, that's it, it may be a, a winner again i don't know what it's going to taste like i haven't grown it before it's supposed to go really long ears and this just supposed, supposed to get 14 foot tall so uh we'll see just how tall it gets and it may get that tall because i will pull the fertilizer to it the other one we uh uh we're going to have here and this might if you're going to grow one in a uh raised bed this is only supposed to get four to six foot tall so it would probably do better because you're not getting these enormously tall with all the pollen way up in the air it's a very, very pretty corn. It's a very expensive corn. That's why I got a small bag. Uh, and it comes from that company right there, uh, Sis Siskiyou. Uh, I'm part Indian. I have no how to spell that name. But anyway, uh, it's called Painted Mountain. It's a uh, it's one that's really has become popular. It is short. We'll see how it does down here because it was you know a lot of, of the Indian corns was grown in drier climates. So we'll see how it it, it handles this the humidity down here. I'm going to be planting it in a raised bed this fall uh, since it's shorter. Uh, and see how it does. One problem we have down here, I'm only 50 miles from the Gulf Coast, so we do have hurricanes. And if you have a hurricane come in, it's gonna blow the corn over. But we'll try it. If we don't have a hurricane, you know, maybe we have better success than I did last year. Uh, the last one we're gonna talk about is the Sunfire Flower Corn. Uh, it's again, a very pretty corn. Uh, got some different colors to it. Uh, these last two have been flower corn. Just the luck of the draw, whenever I start picking which ones, the two flower corns, I, I'm not growing this spring. Uh, what I'll probably do is test these other corns, see how they taste, and then grow these. I'll grow enough where I can increase my seed so I can plant a bigger plot. And then next year I'll grow these two in the spring and, and then and test them against the winter for this year. Now, if you're going to grind uh, corn, uh, We've talked about getting one that's non-electric, but the only thing about getting non-electric stuff is you, you tend to get tire out really easy. Uh, this is one we've used. It's, it's, uh, go ahead. It is a Nutrimill Classic. It's very old. I had it at least 10 years, if not more. Um, you pour your grain into the hopper. This is, when you, if you do order something like this, this comes into the thing and you put it up there. A lot of people don't see it at first. I did it. And you then to do corn, you've got to have this all the way over to low and this one on coarse. And it still has a little bit of difficulty going through sometimes. And so I just kind of go like this with my hands and it goes through just fine. And I'm going to be using it tonight to make some cornbread to go with our supper. And it runs around $279. And that's not for, for the grain mill stuff. That's uh, it's loud. cheaper than it. It does get loud. It's very uh, loud. Now you can, if you're in the kitchen, uh, Grinding it, you can handle it in here in, in the living room. If you're in the kitchen itself, you probably want your for air protection. It's louder than a vacuum cleaner, but oh, yeah. you know that's just. But it doesn't take long to do it. So, so uh, but one like of our again, kids wears earplugs when we turn it on. Yeah, whenever I do it, the only thing I like about the electric is the fact that you'll end up doing it. You can, but if you're going to do a, uh, anytime you go with some of those hand ones, it gets tired and you've got to set it up. You got to clamp it onto the deal and uh, onto your counter and all that. Uh, you tend not to, to do it as often, so that's why we got uh, this one. Anyway, if you have any questions about the, the, uh, any of the corn varieties, uh, hopefully you all join uh, with me and we can uh, grow these corns and see which one does best, see which ones grow best. Uh, I'm going to give some, you know, uh, at least monthly updates on, on how the corn's growing, and at, at the end of it, uh, I do plan on having, you know, uh, you know, showing what the, what the cornbread looks like, uh, and we'll tell you kind of how it tastes. So, anyway, hope you all... Uh, if you like it, subscribe, uh, hit the like button. Thank you.